And our talk today is very serious. It's called Holding the Hand of Jesus. It's amazing when we do really hold the hand of Jesus. Because if we are with him, who is against us? Nobody. He is the most powerful God, all-powerful God. Absolutely amazing God. God of love, but also God of power, who is able to conquer every enemy. And we will see today in our story, and we will hear in our story today, how Jesus conquered the death. But before, I just wanted to bring these beautiful verses from Psalm 37. Psalm 37, about how God treats those whom he consider as godly people. And before we will read those words, let's define what means godly. Who are those godly? First of all, it is those people whom God gave strength. Sometimes we so much rely on our own strength, but it's absolutely different song, different story. God's strength is absolutely amazing. Rely on the volume of your muscle or on your education. It is supernatural. A girl who was just 12, who was able to move rows of chairs who were strongly attached to the floor. One girl and five or six men, they weren't able to stop her. <laughs> she just threw them away and she turned upside down those rows. And, I, and I've seen how big this supernatural power is. And that was just angelic power. But God is much more powerful than any angels, and actually all angels are together, because they are vessels, they are creatures, and he is created, and he is like a huge, endless resource of any energy or power. So in Psalm 37, we read, the Lord directs the steps of the godly, and I forgot to tell you about the second part of the godly, what it means. It means someone who confirm a covenant with God. Someone who confirmed that he is in the covenant with God. For those people, God gives supernatural strength. And he not only gives them strength, he also directs the steps of those people. And he delights in every detail of their lives. Can you imagine how big and loving parent he is? He delights in every detail. And though they stumble, God never promised that we would not stumble. Of course we would, but even when we stumble, we would not fall. They will never fall, he promised to us, for the Lord holds them by the hand. He not only directs, but he also holds them by the hand. And directs means to be fixed on something, for example, to be fixed on his love, to be fixed on his truth, to be established, be securely determined to direct toward something that God leads us. And it's about moral sense. When we speak about wickedness, when we speak about every human country, it doesn't matter what country, every country failed in moral sense. Every country. Because every country contains humans. And as humans, we do lose <laughs> healthy moral sense. But God brings back us to it. He brings back us actually to ourselves, to the image which he embedded in us. True morality is tightly connected with his image in us. His image is absolutely perfect. And as I said, our main story about how Jesus conquered the death, but also he conquered unbelief, he conquered resistance of the people around him who weren't willing to accept his deliverance, his freedom, and his new beginning. And this story actually about patch of unshrunk cloth. Of course, if you are familiar with this story. It's actually a story from the Sunday school. Everyone read probably this story, but it doesn't mean that we've got all deepness of it, because it is not possible completely to get what God has in his word. He gives to us bit by bit, little by little. And a patch of unshrunk cloth, that's how I call this part of the story which we took from Gospel of Matthew chapter 9 verses 16 through 22. It is just the first part of this story. No one, said Jesus, sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. What he was talking about. Have you ever thought why he wrote this story about unshrunk patch 
which people trying to police on an old government. It's actually not about government and it is not about the flesh. It is about something which is much more bigger than just those images. But Jesus brought those images because he faced resistance of two groups of people. Resistance of two groups of people. First group of people, they were Pharisees. They, of course, were political leaders. They were very educated, very familiar with scripture, but their system considered strong sense of control, strong sense of opportunity to get something to themselves. When we come to this place, to church, just to get something to ourselves. We do not really move too far from those political and religious leaders. God wants for us to be cheerful givers, not only skilled receivers. Do you agree with me? First of all, anshrank is a very beautiful word. Anshrank means something which never retreats from anything, which never fades, which never loses its color. It's like absolutely perfect piece of fabric which you would not be able to lose the color. It's like, you know, ladies, you probably know better than I. When you mix clothes together into your washing machine, you're trying to stay with the same color, otherwise you will get multicolorful mess, right? <laughs> but what Jesus talked about, that this cloth you can put into any washing machine, into any circumstances, it would not lose its color, basically, original meaning, it would not retreat from any circumstances or conditions. What is it? I, I'm sure Jesus meant his word. He meant that his word never retreats. His word is self-sufficient, absolutely powerful, supreme, above any circumstances. And no one, no one can subdue his word. And as I said, he faced resistance of two groups. First, uh, I told you were Pharisees. But second group was very interesting. Second group were disciples of John the Baptist. And you know, when we look at John the Baptist, he's a great figure, great hero. But there was one problem with his disciples. They never really were open to the new beginning in their lives. They somehow stagnated with traditions and religious habits of their group. And when Jesus moved further up, they started trying to stop him and his disciples. They said, why you do not fast? Why you disciples do not fast? And he said, because bridegroom is with them. It's a great celebration. You know, when he will be taking, they will fast. They haven't been sensitive to the moment of Jesus coming, to, to Jesus' visitation. They haven't been ready. They stagnated in the past. They lived in the past. And he said that when someone sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, there is a conflict. When the word of God comes setting of something which had been stagnated, doesn't matter what is it, political group or religious group or Christian, even Christian group, if it was stagnated by the traditions which were alive yesterday, but not today. Because God, He is always now. I am. He is I am. He is not I was, I will be. He is I am. Today he is I am. Tomorrow he still will be I am. And after one month he still is I am. And when we try to apply him as someone who was yesterday, it doesn't work. Because God is alive at the moment. And he wants for us to be open and alive at the moment right now. We should not base our lives on the previous experience, because it is gone already, and God is alive today. So Ashrank, as I said, it also could mean new, but it's not a deep and complete meaning. It's very shallow meaning. I would say more better, unconditional Shrunk. Or also, patch of Ashrank cloth represents a cloth dresser. You know who is a cloth dresser? Someone who cuts pieces and puts it together. Someone who knows the harmony. Someone who knows our nature so well that better than we do. So he puts those things together. Old garment. Old means worn by use or worn by abuse. 
I would say to you, everything what has been worn by use is already abused. When humans touch something, they abuse it. Because we are humans. We are carnal beings. We are not perfect. So we can abuse something what we use. And as people, we're also being used by other people. And as people, we're also being abused by other people. And God brought deliverance. God brought new beginning. That's what he calls unshrunk patch. He wants to attach this patch to our souls. And when we are offended, we are not ready to receive this patch. When we are filled up to the brim by the previous pain, we are not ready to receive this patch. When we are angry at someone or even at ourselves, we are not ready to receive this patch. You know why? Because this patch will bring more harm to us. We are ready to receive this patch when we are clean. When we confess, when we release any darkness in us, then patch lays perfectly and covers the gap in our souls. So problem with our souls, not because God is a bad clothes dresser. Problem because we do not ready to accept this patch. And garment. Garment represents something what we dress with ideas. Or when we cover ideas with our words, that's what God sees as garment. And he came to replace this abuse. Do you know how much we abused beautiful ideas with our words when they've been pronounced not honestly, not sincerely? We abuse even most beautiful ideas like love. Like love, for example. How many times love had been abused by humans? Every day, every moment. But what God has done, instead of dressing love by words, even his words are perfect, he came and he dressed love with blood. You know why? Because without his blood we are hopeless. Amen. But when he dresses his idea of love, of friendship, of unity, of perfection, with blood he covers it perfectly. For the patch will pull away from the garment. So when we attach patch of unshrunk clothes to our old system, it keeps living, keeps living. But, but when it leaves, it makes the tear, the gap, even worse. Conflict grows. Conflict. When his word comes to the stagnated religious society, the gap becomes worse and worse and worse. No peace, no joy. So we are angry at each other. We don't understand what is going on. But what is really going on? His patch makes the tear even worse. That is why we need reconciliation. If there is no reconciliation, there is not appropriate place for his unshrunk patch. Verse 17. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. In some sense, we are all wineskins, right? We are all vessels. And when God puts his new wine of salvation, new wine of deliverance, new wine of new beginning into us, something happens. What happens? If they do, if someone puts new wine inside of him, the skins will burst. It can burst with anger. It can burst with accusations. It can burst with... You know, being offended. I've been offended. Pastor offended me. Do you know that I am most vulnerable person here? You know why? Because I talk too much. And when I talk too much, there is no guarantee that one word will go from me and offend someone. Because the words what we pronounce, they are unshrunk. They are self-sufficient. And sometimes they are very offensive. Very offensive. The wine will run out, said Jesus, because the skins will burst. And the wine skins will be ruined. <laughs> so new wine, when it comes inside of us, if we are not ready, it brings... What? Destruction. Have you ever heard that gospel brings destruction to people's lives? That's what Jesus said. Again. Why he said that? Because he had been accused twice by two groups of people. No, 
said Jesus, end of verse 17. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. You know what preservation is? Preservation is salvation. So if our wine skins are still stagnated in an old pattern of life, then the word of God brings, would bring destruction. If we will clean ourselves, remove ourselves from any traces of the old wine skins, then new wine will bring preservation. There is no middle. There is no middle. Verse 18, while he was saying this, a synagogue leader. Now, verse 18, the object lesson was started. Because what I brought to you before, it was just a theory. I've seen some of you already sleeping. You know why? Because it is a dry theory. We are so attached to entertainment effect. And entertainment effect always based on a story. Stories are very easy to, for us to swallow. That is why God ordained this story. And what he, actually he has done, we see here two people. First one is a huge, big maher, synagogue leader. He is very respectful, rich, you know, wealthy man, all powerful, except of his children. You know, I've noticed somehow God always humiliates people with the use of their children, especially big ones, political leaders. So I always look at political leaders when they are corrupted, and I think, what they do? They do that at the expense of their children and grandchildren and grand-grandchildren. If they only would know what they do, what they really sown into their children's lives, I think many political leaders will be different. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came, knelt before him and said, came, knelt and said, he was very assertive in his actions and said, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her. What does it mean? Put your hand on her. What does it mean? Do you remember I told you about cloth dresser? He takes a patch and applies this patch onto new garment. What leader said, I mean synagogue leader said here, take your patch and apply it to the new garment of my daughter who is dead. It's sick. From the logical point of view, it is sick. It is absolutely insane. How come someone can be new if he is dead. But in Jesus' eyes and in God's eyes, that's absolutely perfect conditions for someone to be changed. So what does it mean? It means that even we are alive, we have to be dead to our family traditions, to our national traditions, to our religious and cultural and social traditions. Because if we are not dead but alive, then we are old garment or old wine skins. Which means that when word of God will come to us, and it will happen, I'm telling you, it will happen in many countries of this world. Countries will be ruined only because they are not ready to accept God's word. Just died, but come and put your hand on her, which means patch, put your patch, and she will live, which means new garment will be preserved with the unshrunk patch on it, or new wine, and new wine skins will be both preserved, which means saved. So amazing, even to Jesus. Jesus didn't argue, he didn't argue, he just got up and went with him. Why? Why he didn't say how, how great you said things for people? Because that was enough to Jesus. He knew that this man had been sent by God. So he got up and went with him. And so did his disciples. When someone, when someone gets new wine skins in him or new garment in him, he influences not willingly, other people, other people under the strength or force or power of change only because one has been changed, like this synagogue ruler. Doesn't matter who is that person, it could be our worst enemy. It could be the least 
person in our lives who will affect us greatly. Because God is great. He uses everyone, anyone whom he wants. He is not looking at faces. Now, another story. Immediately, Matthew changes, switch. Now, it is most neglected woman. He just talked about huge, big political leader. Now, move down to the least person. Same principle. Same principle. Doesn't matter how big or how small person is. God is the same to everyone. Just then, when he went with the ruler, just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. What does it mean? It means she, sorry. She had been unclean for 12 years. Years. Maybe for us it doesn't mean much. We live in a society where everything is permitted. Everything is, we are open for anything. We do what we want. But in this society, there were requirements. If a woman or a man had a bleeding, he was considered as unclean. So he or she became an outcast or outcast out of the social spheres. And for 12 years, also important, 12 years is an age of maturity, where persons, girl or a boy, like in our case, a girl becomes a bat mitzvah, which means a daughter of commandment at age of 12, according to Orthodox or conservative Jews, and according to scripture too, and after, because Jesus actually came to the temple at age of what? Why? Because he had been considered as a grown member of society, responsible, fully responsible. So at this age, boys 13, girls 12, they bear their own responsibility, which means law, traditions, and ethics. Law, traditions, and ethics. In all those three areas, we are corrupted. The thing is, the truth is that we are not mature in all those three things. You know why? Because our lives based on our national, cultural, family, traditions. And because of that, we get this old nature of a garment or old nature of wineskins. And in their case, they have been considered as fully responsible and are able to participate in all aspects of Israel community life. So when we are not clean or not new, we even not ready for truly communal life, for truly healthy communal life. That is why so many quarrels and fights and accusations happening in, in every church. When she uh, had been bleeding for 12 years, it was enough to her, came up behind him. Why she came up behind him? Because I told you she had been an outcast. Her life was behind the scenes. She never been up front, otherwise she could be kicked and stoned to death. So she, she hid herself behind the scenes. Anyway, she came to Jesus. Doesn't matter where you are, front line or behind or on the side. You have to come and stretch yourself to Jesus. That's what the truth is. So she came behind of him and touched. See, a patch, a patch came not from Jesus, but from this woman. This woman became an unshrunk patch, or a patch of unshrunk cloth. By her struggles, by her problems, health problems, by her loneliness and by rejection of other, by other society, she became a patch of unshrunk cloth and she touched perfect body, perfect wineskin, perfect garment, so con- contact occurred. She became perfect cloth dresser. She applied patch perfectly at Jesus' body. In this case, she touched one of his tassels of his cloth, which again represent commandment. Commandment. Every tassel on a corner of his cloth represents a commandment. She, she truly became a daughter of commandment after 12 years of struggles. And of his cloth. Why? Because she said to herself, do you remember when the prodigal son what happened with prodigal son when it was uh, the turning point in his life? When he said to whom? To himself. Do not wait until someone will come and tell you. 
You, Sergey, should change your life. You, Sergey, should do this or that. You, you, yourself, and me, myself, can tell to myself or you can tell to yourself. You know what? We should do this and that and that. We should go that way or that direction. So she said to herself, if I only touch Patch, his cloak, I will be healed, which means I will be preserved, 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 healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter. She immediately became a daughter of commandment and daughter of God. He said, your faith has healed you. So what is a healthy faith? There is a dead faith and healthy faith. Passive faith is dead. Active faith is healthy and alive. Faith comes from God to us. Faith comes from God to us. If we are passive, faith spoils. If we are submissive and act according to faith, then faith prospers. We become sons and daughters of commandment. We becoming children of God, children of God, as he said to this woman. And that faith is able to preserve us, to preserve us. Not only us, like in case with this woman, she still preserves, her faith still preserves thousands of people around the globe. And the woman was healed at that moment. Just remind me about garment from history standpoint, from the history of the Bible standpoint. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 13, 14. He also took up, Elisha took up the mantle, which means from Hebrew, which speaks about garment. Mantle and garment is the same word. So he took garment of Elijah that had fallen from him when he was taken up to heaven and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Do you remember I told you that, yes, he took mantle or garment of Elijah, but that is not enough. That is not enough. What do we do with the word of God? What do we do with talents and gifts which God entrusted to us? Do we really act according to the talents and gifts? Do we really share with the riches or possessions what we have or we just keep it for ourselves? In, in Elisha's case, he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him twice, God says to us, the mantle which had fallen from Elijah. He took this mantle and struck the water. A patch. He applied a patch of unshrunk cloth to the body of water. Do not think that when we talk about garment, do not think when we talk about uh, wineskins, it is all, always about human body, not always. God's patch, unshrunk patch, is so powerful. Do you remember I told you, it is never retreats. It never retreats before anything. So when he took this mantle or garment and struck the water, water moved away. Water moved away. Even nature moves away from the power of God's word. Like in this case, he struck that and water was separated. It was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over this way and that. It means that there are upper waters and there are lower waters. Upper waters stand like this. Do you remember I told you? They stand like this. They submissive. And the lower waters, waters of the past, they are gone. Maybe it is too difficult for you. Let's go to the next slide. And he crossed over. He crossed over. He crossed over by the dry land. Girl restored to life. We continue our story, but we took now Gospel of Mark. First Gospel had been written to Israelites. But second Gospel is written to the Hellenistic world. To the Hellenistic world in which we live today. So Gospel of Mark chapter 5 verses 21 through 24, 35 through 43, a girl restored to life. Now when Jesus had crossed, now we see point of view of Mark, same story but from Mark point of view. When Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude, a great multitude gathered to him. Mark wants to say that great multitude always followed Jesus wherever he was. 
and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came. See, Mark brings a ruler of the synagogue name, Jairus. Why? Mark wants to tell to the Hellenistic world that this ruler was special. By this name, he wants to bring a message to the whole world. Jairus means someone who has been enlightened by God. Someone who got the light from the Lord. He came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lays at the point of death. Come and lay, which means patch, apply patch, your hands on her that she may be healed and she will leave, saying, Garment is preserved with the patch. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed, followed. Have they been changed? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. Because they were people of a crowd. God doesn't want for us to be a people of a crowd. He wants for us to be his followers. And throng him. They push him. Jesus. When he was still speaking, a position came. Verse 35. See, Mark brings description of a position. Why? He wants to show that in Hellenistic world always will be people who rely on their logic, just on scientific knowledge, medicine, physiology, and any other allergy. So they came to Jesus while he was still speaking. And they actually came from the ruler of synagogue's house. I'll tell you something. The greatest opposition in our lives stays where? Here. Here. The greatest opposition to us dwells with us here. Like they've been in rulers of the synagogue's house. The difference between ruler of the synagogue and dwellers of his house was that ruler of the synagogue lost his daughter. They didn't lose anything. They just been with him. They still were old. He has been a new wineskin, a new garment. They still were old. And those who were old as a garment or as a wineskin, they opposed not only to the ruler of the synagogue, they actually opposed to God. So in our house, we have people. When we do not change inside, we not only oppose to each other, we also oppose to God to bring new beginnings. They came to him and what they said? Your daughter is dead. Are you smart enough to get that she is dead? Which means plug in your logic, plug in your mental abilities. Why trouble the teacher any further? Why do you trouble? So when you bring something new to this house, there would be even one person who would tell, you have to apologize because you troubled other people. The best way, do not trouble people. You know what is the best way for us to not trouble each other? Just make this house empty totally. Close the door and be gone. And we would not trouble anyone. <laughs> As soon as Jesus heard the word, what was spoken from Satan, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him. See what he has done? He stopped people. He stopped those who bring opposition from following him. God always separates light from the darkness. And no one can change him. No one. Even if I will be thrown away from here, he still will separate light from the darkness. Because God, he is not God of compromise. He is not God of the grayish, political correctness, color. Even Jesus himself, he stopped people from following him. Except Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. Why? Because choose those three to be a pillars of faith, a pillars of his family, a pillars of his church in the future. So he let them see to be witnesses 
Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. Do you think opposition was stopped? Absolutely not. Wherever Jesus went, there was opposition. He came into the ruler of the synagogue's house and saw a tumult, a scandal, a loud, confused noise, and those who wept and wailed loudly. Do you know that in Israel they hired professional mourners? It was a profession. Seriously. I think that was a group which was hired to make this confused noise of the loss. When he came, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? How much money did you get for that? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. They ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and mother of a child and those three, so five people, he took with him and entered where child was laying. Then he took the child patch. He applied the patch on new wine skin of a child by the hand and said to her, Talifa kumi, Talifa kumi, which means a girl who reached the age of 12, rise up. Young girl who became fully responsible for herself, rise up, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, rise. Immediately, verse 42, immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it. Why he commanded them this? I check if you are aware, if you are with me. Why did he command them to not tell anyone about what they've seen? Yes. Time didn't come yet. And said that something should be giving her to eat. That's it. We are done. That's last slide. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. I want to tell you something. I came from the culture where there is great oppression. You are from the culture where everything is permitted. Me and you. Me and you. We both have old garments or old garment in us. Me and you, we all are old wine skin, even Sasha. I'm not talking about the age. We all have old wine skins in us. Doesn't matter where we grew up. But the truth is self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. So the truth is that when we worship God, we have to worship God. We should not eat drink when we worship Holy One because there is a seven days in a week and how many hours when we can eat, drink, sleep, dance, do whatever we want but there is maybe two hours when we can stop eating and drinking that's the truth it's not cultural it is self-sufficient and shrunk patch of God's cloth and of course when we apply it to us there is a damage in us. There is a damage occurs because we carry those old wineskins in us, cultural. That's all very simple. Message is very simple. So Psalm 63, verse 8. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Beautiful union. Beautiful union. Doesn't matter what wineskins do we have. There is opportunity for us to come close to God as much as it possible, like in the case with this woman who was suffering for 12 years and being unclean. She stretched herself behind, behind, we didn't touch this story very much, but what Jesus has done, he actually brought her from behind to the front line. She became accepted member of a society as a result of her stretching and applying herself to the perfect body. Jesus got this perfect body because only his body was fully prepared for this patch of unshrunk cloth on our behalf, on our behalf. We have hope because of him. So we cling to him. He upholds us. We join ourselves together with him. He supports us. We follow closely after him. He defends us. We stay with him in order to be made close to him. He opposes Every enemy, every darkness which arises against us. Actually, support means to defend against opposition and criticism. When you bring real 
living word of God. You will face criticism and opposition. You will. Because word of God wounds people. It brings pain inside of people. It cuts people on two halves inside. It judges their thoughts, their inclinations. It causes harm inside of people. And that is why we will be criticized and opposed. But the truth is that if we cling to God as close as we can, He will uphold us, which means He will defend us. He will defend us. He will defend us. I want to tell you the last thing. I never asked God to be placed at Suri Salvation Army Community Church. I even never dreamed about that, never planned to be here. And if someone would ask, would you like to go to Suri Salvation Army Community Church? I would say, no. <laughs> but it is not about me, about Tanya, or it's not about you. It is about God. It is about His love. It is about His mercy. It is about His principle of applying unshrunk yeah. patch to the new garment or put new wine into the new wine skins. You know, I see this wolf. <laughs> I wonder why this. You know why this wolf is so angry? Because he is hungry and lonely. <laughs> but the wolves, actually, do you know that wolves moved far further than we humans? Because wolves, they really respect their leader. Do you know that wolves, they are extremely communal beings, extremely communal beings. And people always draw them so angry, so aggressive, but they are very communal. There is a law in wolves which they really submit. They have no choice. And only us humans, we, we, we are free to do whatever we want. And we don't care about God's law. Because Jesus abolished God's law, which he never has done, actually. <laughs> so let us pray. If... And I know that we all, we all experienced some harm when we tried to apply this patch to us. You know, one woman accused me and Tanya in Chicago. She said, my life was so easy, so comfortable until you came. When you came, started preaching, my life became miserable. <laughs> I said, I never intended to make your life miserable. It just happens sometimes. It happened with my life, you know. All my friends, all my friends turned away themselves from me. All my friends when I met Christ. All my friends. I lost all my friends. I lived in a small town. They changed the side of the street. Do not say hello to me. Because they considered me a traitor, a crazy, a stupid, I don't know who else. But they didn't want to have any relationship with me. There is a price. There is a price. It is very costly. I just want to ask God to help us when there is a pain from this patch, we have to be patient because He upholds us. The matter is that we have to cling to Him as much as we can. Do you remember this woman when she had this you know, flow for 12 years? She constantly was in pain, constantly. But despite of this pain, she stretched herself. She could be stumped by the people because she was actually... she. Uh, moved herself behind people and she probably touched someone while she got this contact with Jesus. That's my prayer for you and for me right now. That let us stretch ourselves beyond any conditions around us, in us. I know that you have your family history. I have mine. My family history wasn't the best. And I don't think your family history is perfect. Let us stretch ourselves despite of any prohibitions, any obstacles, just stay close as much as we can to Jesus. Close as much as we can to His commandments. Do you remember she touched this tassel, which represents a commandment. God gave those commandments to guide us, to guide us. Satan said, you are not under. You are not under. Yes, we are under. Because commandments are holy. They've been given to us. They've been given to us to protect us. God never gives something which is spoiled. He gives the best to us. So stretch yourself. I stretch myself. I grew up in, in an atheistic family. 
That's terrible. But if you grew up in a religious Christian family, it is also terrible. Because it's, it is a setting which became rotten and old long time ago. Father, I just ask you, please, I know we are tired here physically from me being so long, but I ask you, Father, please help us to be stretched in every belief, in every knowledge, in every fact of who we are, Father. Please help us to be like this precious woman who got her healing, who became an accepted member of society. Please accept us as we are and uphold us, defend us, defend us, even from ourselves. Is someone here who doesn't like himself or herself? There is someone here who doesn't like himself or herself, I know that. Do you fully accept yourself in every aspect of your life? If not, if not, then you have to forgive yourself. You have to accept yourself because God accepted you. He received you as you are. Tell him inside of yourself, Father God, please forgive me for, for rejection which I caused to myself, for the loneliness away from you. Please help me to receive myself as I am and to be open, to be truly new wineskin, to be truly new garment. And when you apply your patch, it will be perfectly fit and we both will be preserved. Your word in me and I we will be preserved. We will be saved. I know you like this word to be saved. So we will be saved. In Jesus' name I'm praying. Amen. Amen. And for those of you who have relatives, relatives, you know, like Siri. Siri, pray for Siri. She's a brave woman. But there is a battle zone battle zone in her house if it is in your house if you have relatives who do not share your faith who accuse you they can accuse you that you bring those troubles into their houses then forgive them pray that god will help you to be his ambassador to be his his hand his eyes his feet his ears And pray for this city, pray for the city of Suri. There was one, one girl here, she beautified this building for many years. She, she had been involved into repair, one girl. But then when I asked her about Jesus, she didn't tell me. Maybe she was afraid of her relatives, I don't know. She's from another religion. I'm sure there are people who got revelation about Jesus, but because of that fear, they still keep it quiet do not attend any churches pray for them that god will give them courage he will uphold their lives in jesus name amen